Hello everyone, I'm your host Nivina Maniraj and welcome to another episode of RHB Money Chat where we provide you with tips and insights on how to better manage your finances. Joining us once again this week is Frank Sen Liao, Head of Investors Advisory, RHB Bank Berhad and he will be sharing with us his tips and tricks on how to craft investment strategies that are best suited to your investment goals and he'll also be guiding us through the complexities of investing in the new norm. So this episode is particularly useful for those of us who are just starting out in the investment game. Welcome, Frankson. Thanks, Neve, and glad to be here again. It's good to see you again. So, Frankson, this time around, uh, let's skip with the whole dumb joke and get right to it, shall we? Okay, okay, right. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Mm -hmm. uh, investments really for everyone, Frankson? Good question. And the term of investment, let's just put aside first. Okay. I just want you to imagine something. All right. What is the purpose? What is your goal in life? And what is the desired outcome? For example, do you ever dream of having a good car? Mm -hmm. Or a dream car that you like? Of course. A dream house? Of course. Do you really want to have a good lifestyle when you retire? Obviously. And some of us may be thinking of building a business legacy. Correct. So every dreams that we are talking about or we, what I'm referring right now is that that is what we call as goal. Why? We need to start somewhere. If today you want to buy your dream house, you need to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And where is that somewhere? You need to start saving. But the saving brings you to that angle or investment brings you to the end result. So you have to ask yourself these very basic questions. Okay? So a lot of people ask me, what is investment? In actual fact, investment is about realizing the goals, the very goal that you set for yourself. And it's very essential for us to look into that goal and to fulfill that dream or desire. And that's why if you ask me, although I say so, such a long story over here, <laughs> yes, investment is for everyone who have that dream or desire that goals that I'm talking about. So I think it's very important here for everyone to understand that yes, investing is for everyone who are looking to realize their long-term plans, right? Because in a lot of people's minds, I think they seem to think that investing is only for the rich and that is just like playing a game. And then there are also those who think that investing has only to do with playing with the stock markets. Now, there's always a misconception lies and when people talk about investment, they always think about stock market. Correct. And they always think about this is for the rich people. Mm -hmm. So that is totally a little bit of misconceptualized because when you look in the perspective that it's a game because this stock market that we're talking about is rather volatile. It's because it's a vicious cycle that that vicious cycles of up and down is based on what we know as the sentiments. Correct. So today, when you talk about the emotion, when, is, when the emotions are being greedy, this is where you see that the market is on this, what we call as a high side. Mm -hmm. Now, when the people have that fear and they need to exit the market, it's like one time. Everyone exited the market and that is where you form this so-called share price or indices up and down. It's really just like an emotion, roller coaster of emotion going up and down for the investors as well. However, in regardless of all these things, most importantly, a lot of people forgot about is the principle of investing. Right. When it comes to when it comes to principle of investing, it's very essential that we determine the goals. Mm -hmm. We need to determine the allocation. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, we need to uh, determine the tenor. So these three things, if I put into perspective, it's just like a bonsai tree. A bonsai tree, you need to, for example, you need to have a goal. Right. The goal is just that how you want your bonsai tree to shape. Correct. To be like, it's determined by you because that is the outcome that you want. Then the second part is that what are the allocation that you need to put in for this entire bonsai tree? You need to trim. You need to put the fer fertilizers. You need to put into the sunlight and sometimes you need to take out from the sunlight. Correct. Correct. And last but not least, with that seed of putting into that seed, that first seed when you do the planting, does it grow instantly? No. 
That is the thing. You need to give it time. Okay, Frankson. Uh, I like the example of you using the bonsai tree because I think it's very relatable to a lot of people out there. But maybe you can also walk us through the entire thought process of this. So what is the first step? Most important first step when it comes to when it comes to the financial planners or even when you come to a bank, mm -hmm. we need to understand a few bases. What we call as the goals. What is your investment goals? Now, when we know your investment goals, actually they are three very common investment goals that I can share with you right now. Okay. In fact, the first investment goal that we are talking about is called wealth planning. Now, wealth planning is always about accumulating a certain amount of money for future use. Okay. So if today, let's say you want to buy a house or buy a car, that is a big ticket item. Mm -hmm. You need to accumulate it. And that is where you build this foundation to accumulate via investing, okay, to save up that money in order to reach that goal. Okay. Second is for education. Mm -hmm. Now, education planning mostly is that when it comes to a life cycle, you got children mm -hmm. and you want to plan for your children. Right. You do not want to wait until then only you plan for the, your children. So planning got to start right now, either to study overseas. Correct. Yes. And last but not least, I think that one is our favorite because we are working. So retirement. Retirement. Okay. We work until at least, you know, until the very end, we want to have a comfortable retirement. Right. And whether is it sustainable or not. Mm -hmm. So million dollar question for you today. How much do you think you require for retirement? Well, uh, assuming that uh, my mortgage and my higher purchase loans have already been paid off by then, I would be thinking somewhere in the ballpark of maybe 300,000? Mm. You see, that is the thing. A lot of people thinking about when I want to retire, I want 300,000, I want 1 million ringgit. Right. So the biggest question is that, is 300,000 or 1 million ringgit is sufficient for retirement or not? So the, you just look at it, the amount is huge. But is it sustainable? Mm -hmm. Now, how do we calculate sustainability? It's very simple. Do a reverse engineering okay. or what we call as reverse calculation. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to look at your expenses. Okay. Now, it's your spending habit. So, for example, if you like to go out to eat, you like to buy groceries, you like to buy clothes and all this, that is your habit. That habitual forms that basis of your entire expenses per month basis already. Correct. And then on a yearly basis, do you like to travel? If of you like course. to travel, of course now cannot because COVID-19. <laughs> but still yes. can choose Otherwise, to team Malaysia, yeah. okay? So what you can put in that perspective is that you put all these expenses and that will be your yearly expenses, correct? Correct. Now that yearly your yearly expenses, as we look into it, we we need to calculate that fifteen years later, what is the value? Mm -hmm. There is a future value because now we are talking about a present value that you are using this much of expenses already. Correct. And then we need to look at fifteen years later because why? Maybe fifteen years later we are planning to retire. Correct. So from that aspect. From that aspect, 15 years, we need to put in a calculation where we known as compounding. Okay. Now, this is not compounding interest. We are compounding the inflation because why? Inflation is a cost. Yes. Every year, goods are getting pricier. Yes. So, you need to embed this cost inside. Then, we can calculate the future value. Mm -hmm. And based on this so-called future value, then we already know exactly how much is required when we retire and from that anger which I shared with you just now remember sustainability yes. because why we still got many years to live after we retire mm -hmm. correct? correct so whether those money is sustainable for us moving forward that's why it's very important or very critical that we need to look into this and if we start young and start early it's better right. in fact so just imagine a bonsai tree now, you need to grow. That's why I say this is where we look at tenor. Mm -hmm. And also a part that we need to do the soil. Yeah. We need to put in more fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Then only you can create a masterpiece. Correct. And that masterpiece will be your retirement program. Mm -hmm. I think the point that you raise uh, makes a lot of sense and I think it's very important for us to uh, keep in mind that inflation because I think a lot of us will not uh, think about inflation when you're planning about when you're thinking about planning for your retirement, right? Yeah. So maybe you can help uh, explain how we should be 
uh, planning for our retirement and building the correct foundation because like your example of the bonsai tree, we need to have really strong roots for it to be healthy, right? Correct. Strong roots comes with your planning. Correct. So that planning is very crucial. Before you start, you must have a very strong foundation. Mm -hmm. That strong foundation is when you need to this where you need to do the risk assessment. Now, each and every you know risk profile have a different perspective or different perspective or different type of investment. Now, for a very normal you know right now for us at this current uh, situation, if you don't want to go stock market. You can actually invest via unit trust investment. Okay. So unit trust investment is giving a bigger coverage because it have a wider spectrum of products mm -hmm. with different type of risk classes. Okay. Now with that different risk classes, if we define it, you know, define it larger, mm -hmm. is that they in terms of the category of funds, there is fixed income fund, there is a balance fund, there is also pure equity fund, and there is also. Uh, alternative investment type of investment in this so-called unit trust program. That's a lot of options. Yes, there's a lot of options. And besides that, then we break down into just this you know, key we, we call as asset location or type of investment that you go in. There are also sector allocation where some of the funds just focus on specific sector. Mm -hmm. And there's also country allocation. Some focus on different, different countries which have like Asia or ASEAN or some will focus on US only. Okay. Uh, that, that in fact gives us a wider prospect in terms of this diversification for the investors. So that, this is something that we should, that's mean if you ask me, uh, we can actually look into it and start investing and plan this because why this is a very long term investment that we are talking about right now. Okay, Frankson, uh, just let's just say for argument's sake that mm. I am planning to start on investing for the very first time. What type of investor would you say I am? What type of investor? Because I'm not a feng shui master. <laughs> I cannot just look at your face today and tell you that, hey, Nif, you are aggressive. So you have to go through a normal procedure. And that procedure is what we call as a risk profile assessment. Okay. Now, that is a list of questionnaires that will be given to you to answer. Now, do answer this with open heart and with, you know, with an understanding on what you want to plan for your future because with that aspect, as us as a financial planner or the sales staff mm -hmm. or the, that's mean the RMs, they can actually relook into this and see how can we manage your investment. Okay. Okay. With the information on the risk category, mm -hmm. we know exactly how to manage you. Okay. Now, we have six categories of risk classification in RHP Bank. All right. So definitely, we uh, just I can share with you all the six. Uh, definitely. <laughs> okay. So I can share with you the three very basic ones. Yeah. Okay. The three basic one is uh, what we call as moderate conservative. Mm -hmm. Then, second one is balance investor okay then third is known as aggressive investor okay now what's the difference mm -hmm. as a if you're a moderate type of investor moderate conservative why do we call moderate conservative because they can still invest not purely just FD okay okay so what they want to do is that they when we plan this so-called asset allocation for our customer we are put into 70% into this fixed income portion. Okay. Then the other thirty percent will ask the investor to put into equities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when you are a balanced investor, most of the time, balanced investor they want income plus with they want some you know equities as you know equities uh, excitement. Mm -mm. So it will be 50, 50 into okay. equities, fifty into fixed income. That is more a balanced portfolio. Now, on the other end, you have a very aggressive investor and this aggressive investor can sometimes go 100% into pure equities because they want to have different different equity exposure to give them the edge of getting deriving more mm. higher returns. So, of course, high, of course, you know, high returns, high risk, high risk. low returns, low risk. That, that is how the basis, if you look at this entire so-called, you know, so-called chart over here is always high risk, high return, high risk, high return, sorry, low risk, low, low return. returns. That is how it goes. Okay. okay. 
And I'm sure that uh, this is particularly important to keep in mind now in this volatility due to the COVID-19, right? Yes, that is very important, especially right now if I am a very high risk investor. Yeah. And purely 100% equities, a lot of us are not looking to diversify. Because we scared that, hey, this market is so good, why we want to diversify? Right. But I think it's totally about time to look into some of the fixed income to protect some of your investments. Mm -hmm. Give it a better diversification. You cannot just put in 100% equity. 10, 20, 30% depending on that you know, allocation that will give you a little bit of protection okay. of your investment instead of giving all 100% equities. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, Frankson, I'd like to ask, um, if the market is so volatile right now, right, why is it that investors are so aggressively investing now compared to even the pre-COVID-19 era? Well, now the investors are definitely looking to this market at a different angle because there are money from the governments, you know, like for example, the moratorium actually helped investors to you know, look into, if they don't have expenses, they need to pay for their loan, the money will go somewhere. Yes. It's either they buy something or either they invest. Correct. That is what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's why I say indirectly, that form the basis. Now, another part of it, another story is that the stock market and the fundamentals that we are referring right now is the economy. Okay. The state of economy may not be very good at this current juncture because all of us have a very bad expectation yeah okay and the previous GDP was negative mm -hmm. so stock market is a different level altogether stock market is about home stock market is about future mm -hmm. okay it's a future indicator so a lot of people are talking about the vaccine the economy will progress back and that is where you can see that the stock market is heading to that direction instead of going on the other sideways okay. the are going sideways in fact so that is what i can share with you is that in this moment of time it's very important for the investor to relook at if they are investing into you know so-called shares or stock market and all this thing what is going on is to relook at what the market is doing mm -hmm. so to, today you know like for example what's happening today is what we know as rotational play. Okay. So investment are rotating. What do I mean by rotating? Rotating to different sectors. Mm -hmm. So the first sector which was during uh, COVID-19 benefited the most was the IT shares. Okay. Now what, what's happening is very simple. COVID-19 changed the way of everyone doing business and it's a new norm correct what is a new norm right now is like for us to do webinar over here it's yeah, a new yeah. norm everyone is doing it everyone's doing it yes second is that concord is like zoom or teams everyone is using it yeah so this is a new norm that we are referring to right now yes where and everything is moving to digitalization correct yeah. exactly and that is why the it shares or the sector they benefited it mm -hmm. especially in US, mm -hmm. not in Malaysia context, because in Malaysia it's the glove company. Okay. But in US, you can see that these IT shares are moving on a very high. If you look at Nasdaq itself, it is moving at a very, very high valuation. Okay. Now, because of the higher valuation, sometimes as an investor, you will also be afraid. You may think about it, am I, you know, uh, do I want to take profit? Mm -hmm. So when they start to take profit, what happens? The share price start to tumble. And why I say rotation, now that is where, when I take out this money, I got to invest somewhere. Right. So now, I rotate, I go into pharmaceutical. Now, why pharmaceutical? Pharmaceutical is very essential, especially right now we're talking about vaccine. Yes. The development of vaccine is very critical. Right. All of us know about that. But Whoever who develop it will have billions of users. Yes. Because everyone needs that vaccine in order to go out. Yes. Correct? So just imagine on that context, pharmaceutical shares that develop the vaccine, they definitely benefit. Mm -hmm. But Malaysia context is that those that have that contract or have that license agreement with these you know, so-called developers of the uh, of the of this uh, vaccine 
they must have the rights in terms of license to distribute distribution or right. manufacturing correct either these two they will benefit and this is where you can see that a huge stream of cash mm -hmm. coming into these pharmaceutical companies that we're referring to but by right right now you ask me honestly okay they will they will benefit but we do not know when when <laughs> yes correct. Okay, thank you so much, Frankson, for those uh, insights. But uh, as usual, before we end our chat session for today, do you have any additional bits of advice that you would like to leave us with to weather the months to come? Yeah, actually, the few questions, if I can refer back, refer back to the previous webinar that we have been talking about. In terms of our previous webinar, we talked about FOMO. So that FOMO mm -hmm. is still happening right now. And that FOMO is fear of missing out. If uh, investors sometimes need to reevaluate this market mm -hmm. and they need to protect downside a lot of people like the upside but there's no downside protection right. so to me stay diversified is one of the most critical accents of investment right now and number two stay invested don't think about because of that i keep cash under my bed yeah okay <laughs> i know fd is relatively low okay but we still need to invest okay and most importantly stay safe and stay healthy thank you frankson i think that's a particularly important bit of advice to keep in mind and uh, thank you so much for simplifying a fairly complex topic so that when we do try our hand at investing in the future we can do so with confidence okay thank you very much thank you all for joining us for another episode of rsv money chat if you are looking to get started on investments or looking to reallocate your existing investments, we at RHB are always more than happy to assist you in any way that we can. If you would like to find out more on investing, please click on the link that you will find below. Or if you have any investment related questions, please comment below. And don't forget to share this video with your friends. Stay tuned for the next episode of RHB Money Chat. And until then, stay safe and I'll see you again soon.
I don't think so. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. 